everyone. This is Rachel Gwaltney from MK. We are going to get started with today's webinar. Um, please feel free to keep introducing yourselves in the chat box. Um, welcome to our discussion today on the new online Proctor GED test. I'm glad to see a lot of familiar names and also some new names here in our participant list. So I think we've got some great information coming up and we are excited to get ready to share it with you. So just a couple of logistics. Uh, the webinar is being recorded and we will post the recording um, on our website and on our Facebook page for you to view later. Or if you have colleagues that would like you'd like to share this information with, you'll be able to share the recording. We will also email all of the slides to you after the webinar. So you don't have to worry about taking lots of copious notes. We'll share with you everything that we're presenting today. Um, we've muted all participants for today's webinar. So please just keep yourself on mute um while we're doing the presentation and that way we'll keep the background noise down and if you have any questions as we go along just put those in the chat box and uh scott and i will try to answer those as we go along and we'll have some time for q a at the end as well if you need a certificate that uh, demonstrates you are here uh, completing the webinar today you'll indicate that when you complete the survey that comes to you at the end of the webinar along with the slides and the recording so just make a note of that in the in the survey and we will send you a certificate later this week so as many of you probably already know by now um, massachusetts coalition for adult education or mk um, is your voice of adult education here in massachusetts and we champion the right of all adults to acquire 21st century literacy English language and numeracy skills leading to economic prosperity, strong families and vibrant communities. You have my contact information here on the screen. Um, so please feel free to get in touch with me whenever you need information about MK or any other resources that we have and how we can help you with your work. So without further ado, I'm going to turn our presentation over to Scott from GED Testing Service, and he's going to share with us some great information about the new um, online version of the Proctor GED test. So Scott, you can go ahead and share your screen and we can get started. Excellent. Rachel, you can hear me well? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Let me just put this in slideshow mode. Okay, and let me just fix one thing here. Okay. Excellent, everybody should be able to see my screen now. Rachel, just to confirm, you can see it, right? Yep, looks good. I assume everyone else can. But okay, uh, Rachel, thank you. Happy to be with you guys today. Uh, I'm glad I could. I think this is uh, certainly important information given current times here. So I wanted to talk about our online Proctor GED test pilot. We're, we're calling it a pilot for this current uh, phase, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, that photo down there on the bottom right was taken at last year's uh, network conference, actually. Uh, and I, sh I should just do a, a quick introduction here. I'm sorry, I was, I was looking at people coming in. I, I certainly have uh, know some of you, but I'm Scott Salises. Uh, I'm regional manager, state relationships here at GED Testing Service. Uh, I live in Boston, so I'm, I'm local. Uh, I've been out, certainly I've been to attending network for several years now since the GED test came back to the state of Massachusetts. And I know I've, I've visited a fair amount of your local programs as well and you know look forward to doing that again at some point in person in the in the future okay so the topics for today we'll get right into this quickly are uh, the online proctor GED test so I want to talk a little bit about just about uh, the national situation here uh, then we will get into the details of the online GED test uh, this pilot we'll get into all the policy information uh, there is, there's, there's really not a lot of Massachusetts specific information, essentially the information I'll be talking about here and all of this policy information applies to, to any state across the U.S. There's really just a couple of things that are Massachusetts specific that I, I will get to. And then once we get to this first part, um, I, I, I'm going to pause for questions I think after this first part. 
because uh, I, I should be able to, uh, I, I'm sure you will have questions, but I mean, all, pretty much all the relevant information I think we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll cover here in this first part. And then certainly whatever you need clarifications on, happy to do it. And then after that, uh, I'd like to show you briefly actually do, to, to leave the PowerPoint and actually show you what the student experience looks like in terms of uh, when they're scheduling an OP test. Uh, it'll be fairly brief. Uh, and then cover some educator and student resources. Okay, so nationally, uh, the situation, needless to say, you know, back in mid-March was all of a sudden uh, testing centers all over the United States were, were closing. Uh, I would say, you know, 80 to 90 percent of testing centers certainly from, from March, April, and into May were closed so there really was testing was severely limited during the pandemic stay at home orders etc uh, the reopening of in-person testing from really greatly varies from state to state uh, in some states sorry i'm just going to uh, change oops in some states uh testing is starting to be open it probably won't surprise you you know it's a lot of these southern states who never some of them never fully closed or starting to reopen uh our home state here massachusetts of course uh you know we have had one of the highest caseloads in the u.s and right now i know for gd testing over the last few months I, i've had one site in the state in boston just fyi that has remained open but other than that, there, are, there have been no other GED testing sites since, uh, since mid-March. So there's certainly been a uh, you know, no testing available, significant backlog. Uh, March through June, of course, are typically the busiest months for, for GED slash high school equivalency testing. Uh, and really, for the last three months, uh, for the most part, I mean, thousands of people have not been able to test. I mean, overall, nationally, we've seen about a 70% decrease from the March to June timeframe of 2019 to the same timeframe of 2020. Many individuals as well, and I'm, I'm, I'd be interested to know if anybody wants to put comments in chat if you're hearing from some of your students, but uh, I think a lot of individuals are wary right now about coming in to do in-person testing. I know in some of the states we've seen where a fair amount of test centers have reopened, we're not seeing a big surge of people coming back in. I definitely think that's, to, I think one of the reasons is health concerns, whether it's you know, people who have pre-existing conditions or people who are just generally like all of us, you know, don't wanna contract the virus or afraid of passing it on to family members are making uh, you know, people think twice about coming in to do in-person testing right now. All right, I'm just trying to uh, move something on screen here. There we go, sorry, it's at a minimize something. Okay, so the online Proctor GED test pilot, the basics, and throughout this, I'm gonna to refer to online Proctor GED test pilot as OP, it's just, a, you know, writing it out so many times is, is just takes up too much space. I'm gonna frequently refer to it as OP for online Proctor. So the, the basics of this, uh, test takers can take the GED test from the comfort of their home or another location, as long as it meets the criteria that we, they need, and I'll, I'll talk more about that. Uh, why do we have this? So we, we have this, of course, to create this, you know, create this pressure relief valve. I mean, this has built up over the last three months where thousands of people who, uh, who ordinarily were going to take a GED test were, were not able to do so. Uh, and people, people's lives in the world is continuing here. I mean, college is continuing, whether it's online or in person. I mean, people still need jobs. People are going to the military. You know, people need to move on with their lives, and they, uh, they need some way to, to complete high school equivalency. Uh, the GED test is, it'll be delivered online and is continually monitored by a trained proctor, and also there is some artificial intelligence built in as well. Uh, when somebody is taking an online product or GED test. So the test is being administered, uh, we've contracted with an organization called OnView. OnView is part of Pearson View. It's the, you know, it's the online proctored uh, program that is part of, of Pearson View. So they are the ones we've partnered with here to deliver the online product or GED test. This bottom bullet is important, so we are not at all looking to move away from traditional in-person testing. Uh, 
the in-person testing model is working well. This is just, you know, extraordinary, unusual times here and really a, a once in a, a hundred years pandemic uh, that we're dealing with right now. So there, you know, there has to be some uh, way for people to be able to test as in-person testing slowly begins to, uh, to reoccur. Uh, but again, we're, uh, when things get back to normal, I mean, we anticipate people will be going back into a test center to test. But obviously for the foreseeable future, you know, we want to have the, the online proctored option for folks to do as well. So we are calling this a pilot and we're calling this a pilot because uh, we don't have every bell and whistle, so to speak, uh, that we want to have. Uh, the saying that comes to mind here, when this pandemic hit, just to give you a quick background here, when the pandemic hit, uh, you know, the on, an online proctor GD test was really, it was something we had had a, some small amount of conversations about in the past, but it was not something at all we, we were ready to roll out. And just to, just to give you, a, just expand the context, our conversations about having an online proctor GD test in the, in the, in the past were really about a really specific uh, subset of test takers. And those are, we thought it could be very useful in rural areas, particularly a state like Alaska comes to mind, where it is an enormous state with huge rural areas where people often uh, have difficulty. There's just not a test center nearby and you're, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of miles. So we thought in some rural areas of certain states, you know, having this available in the future could be a good thing. And the other thing we thought of uh, was that there are certain folks with a physical disability who coming into a test center can be problematic and having an online proctored at home version for them, we thought would be a terrific option. As I said, with both of those, with both of those things, it was not something we were looking to roll out uh, immediately at all. It was really just kind of preliminary conversations until the pandemic hit, in which case we had to go into hyperdrive in order to roll out this online proctor GD test. There was, as you can probably imagine, there was a ton of uh, behind the scenes work in putting this all together. And honestly, I'm, I'm proud of the team for, for rolling it out as quickly as possible. I mean, we would have had it, liked to have it rolled out in early May, but it just, it just wasn't possible given the amount of work involved. So just a little context there. So we're calling it a pilot, as I said, because you know, there are some things that we don't have available yet, which I will talk about, which will, will, will be coming, but are not available yet. But we really wanted to roll it out. I mean, the, the saying I like is, you know, don't let perfection be the enemy of good. You know, we, it's, we, we have a, this version, current online proctor GD test will be available for, for the vast majority of people, most people, with some exceptions that I will talk about here that'll come later. Uh, security is always a concern. Uh, you know, test security with the in-person test and especially with an online proctored version, which we've never had before, is absolutely a concern for us. I mean, we feel confident in our security, but at the same time, there's always, uh, you know, little things that keep you up at night and say, you know, if this would be a uh, really a bit of a nightmare if, um, you know, there was some type of security breach uh, due to having it available in the online proctored version. I will say just as an FYI, the forms of the tests we are using for the online proctored version differ from the in-person version. The uh, online proctor, we started it with a really small subset of test takers in late May, and now we have started rolling it out quickly across the, across the United States to a larger audience. As of this morning, about 262 individuals across the U.S. have taken an online proctor GD test, and there have been a few test takers in Massachusetts so far, or a small amount, fewer than five people in Mass so far have taken an online proctor GD test. What we're calling the pilot phase will run approximately until July 31st, and then essentially we'll go into a, a post-pilot pilot phase, or if you want to call it just the, you know, the, the normal standard um, OP after that. Okay, taking an OP GED test, how it works. So students will register and schedule their OP test via their GED.com account, just as they would if they were going to test in person. We do have the requirement that students must earn a 145 or higher on the GED Ready Practice Test within the past 60 days in order to take an OP test. So they have to get a 145 or higher on the GED Ready within 60 days to take any subject 
they wish on the GD test. So that would be, you know, if you wanted to take all four subjects via OP, you would have to get a 145 or higher on the GD ready practice test in each subject area. It requires a laptop or a computer with a camera and a microphone and a stable internet connection. Uh, they must be, when taking an OP exam, in an enclosed room, you know, with a door that can be shut, quiet environment. There can't be other individuals in the room. Appointments are available 24-7. That, uh, that is a big perk of, of OP. Um, they really are available 24-7. Now that is subject, of course, to appointment times filling up. We've noticed that weekends fill up quickly, as you might expect, and also weeknights tend to fill up quickly. But it just depends. I mean, if you want to test uh, the same day, you know, you may be limited in your appointments time. But if you want to go out a few days or go out to the next week, uh, you should really be able to get almost any time you want. Like weekends tend to fill up the quickest. Um, but it is available 24-7. I mean, I was looking recently and I saw, you know, people taking the test in the middle of the night. So works for them. Fabulous. OP test scores, they will be available a couple of hours after testing, if not sooner. Before we actually started the OP testing with actual test takers, a few of us with GD Testing Service tested it out. I took uh, Reasoning Through Language Arts via OP a few weeks ago. Um, took the test, went through it, and within 30 minutes, my score was available. Students must complete a system check at the time of their appointment to ensure their system will support delivery of an OP exam. I put the link in there. That is, uh, if you want to take a look at this, this link is also in the student's account. And I'm going to talk more about the system check because this is one of the key takeaways I'd like you to have in terms of the importance of the system check. Okay, what students will be eligible? So for the pilot phase, it will be 18 years old uh, or older to take an OP test. So we, we're not allowing 16 or 17 year olds during the pilot phase. I do expect we will allow 16 and 17 year olds once we move out of the pilot phase, but for the next, certainly through the end of July, uh, it will be 18 plus. As I said uh, previously, Requirement is uh, anyone wanting to take an OP GED test will need to score a 145 or higher on the GED Ready test uh, within the past 60 days. You know, if somebody took it two weeks ago, and their score obviously will be good um, for any subject they want to take. We currently have a promotion on the GED Ready, the official practice test. It is now 50% off until June 30th. I'm hoping we extend that actually, but I can only promise it to June 30th at this time. But I'm I'm hoping we actually will be able to extend it. The 50% off the GED Ready uh, comes, uh, is automatically applied when they go to purchase it as well. In addition, I'll mention some of you, some of the programs I've, I've provided some GED Ready vouchers to you in the past, and I'm, I'm still willing to do that if you contact me, so FYI. The OP, uh, OP GED test is available in English during the pilot. We don't have a Spanish version yet. It is in the works and we will have a Spanish version later this summer. But for right now, it is English. We have it in English, but not Spanish yet. Test accommodations are not available yet during the pilot. We will have testing accommodations available later this summer. We just don't yet. The only exceptions to that I will say are things that are essentially built into OP. What I mean by that is, let's say somebody applied for a testing accommodation where they needed a private room. Well, by the very nature of, of an online proctored test, you are in, you are the only person in the room. So therefore, you, know, you wouldn't need an accommodation for that. You would just schedule an OP exam. I guess the other thing I'd mention is, you know, if somebody does have some type of physical disability, obviously testing at home for them, you know, would be, should be quite easy. So there are some of those sort of built-in testing accommodations that OP handles without an accommodation. But things like extra time, which is the most common, commonly requested accommodation, that will be, they will be available later this summer. Uh, it does require a laptop or a desktop computer. You need a camera, you know, a built-in webcam or an external webcam, because uh, the proctor is going to be watching you, as in recording you actually, while you take the test. Uh, 
you do need to have a microphone because they do need to hear sound in case you know you, somebody off screen was give, giving a test taker answers or help, et cetera. Stable internet connection. Uh, and as I said, must be in an enclosed room with a door, you know, a quiet environment, can't have other people walking by or in the room. Continuing on the policy highlights, uh, students will not be allowed to retake exams on OP. So this is for, for two reasons, really. One of them is a bit of test security. We, we, we are concerned about people potentially trying to harvest questions. Etc. So we are limiting every uh, test takers. You get one attempt per subject area on the GED OP test. Uh, you can you do not get a, a retest on it if you do not pass via OP. If you don't pass via OP, you'll have to retest in a physical test center. That is also one of the reasons why we have the GED ready requirement. That GED ready requirement is GED ready is highly predictive of performance on the GED test. Uh, if somebody gets a 145 or higher, or I'll, I'll, let me rephrase that, if somebody gets a 145 on the GED Ready test, it was about a 70% likelihood they will pass that subject area. And that just goes up, the likelihood goes up the higher you go. You know, if you got a 160 on the GED test, it's a significantly higher likelihood you would pass the, the actual test if you got, say, a 160 on the Ready. So that is why we have the ready requirement as well. You know, we want people to be able to demonstrate they are likely to pass, given that they uh, were not doing retests on OP at this time. Uh, this is a, a, a quite convenient uh, for test takers. Once you schedule an OP exam, you can cancel or reschedule it with a full refund of the test fees up until 30 minutes before your scheduled test time. So if I had a four o'clock appointment today, you know, I could uh, reschedule or cancel that appointment all the way up to, you know, basically 320, 329. So that should be quite convenient for folks. I do see, I do see test takers and just looking at appointment schedules so far, frequently changing their appointment times, which is, which is easy to do. In terms of no-shows, <clears throat> uh, students, they have a 15-minute grace period before there are no-shows. So if I had 11, if I had a, excuse me, a 4 p.m. appointment today, I would have until 4.15 p.m. to essentially start the check-in process. If I didn't show up after that 15 minutes to at least start the process, I would be considered a no-show and I would forfeit, forfeit my exam fees at that time. When students are checking in for their OP exam, we, we recommend they, they log in about 30 minutes in advance if possible. It just, it'll just make it for a more relaxing process to, to log in early. They must provide a, basically the, it's going to walk them through a process where they'll have to submit a photo of themselves via their phone or webcam, but really phone is how I think the vast majority of people are going to do that. And then they will have to submit a photo of their, the front of their ID and the back of their ID and also pictures of their workspace. It'll, the, the process will tell them, you know, what the pictures, what angle they should be taking the pictures from. IDs must be government issued identification. We are allowing expired IDs right now due to the pandemic. We know that DMVs in, in many states have been closed or limited and therefore it's been much more difficult to get into uh, renew driver's licenses or other IDs. So we are allowing our expired RD IDs for the foreseeable future. The ID must include the person's name, uh, date of birth, signature, and photograph. And I think you guys all know, but I mean, for primary forms of ID, we're talking passport, driver's license, learner's permit, or other you know, national, state, country identification cards. More highlights here. Uh, only an on-screen calculator will be allowed for the OP test. They will not be able, handheld calculators are not allowed due to security purposes. We do have a tutorial for the on-screen calculator. I provided it uh, later on in this, in this uh, presentation slide deck. Uh, there is, we don't allow the dry erase boards or physical paper to be used for note-taking. There is an on-screen scratch pad that can be used during the OP test. I will show you a visual of that uh, later on. Um, 
again, we're, we're concerned about security if we allow, allow paper to be utilized. Um, we're going to look and see if we could come up with an, a better, uh, say a better or other option than this scratch pad. Uh, but for right now, it is the scratch pad they can use for, for note taking. Students cannot take an unscheduled break during the exam. So, you know, in other words, you can't get up in the, in the middle and say, oh boy, I'm going to go, you know, get a snack or go to the bathroom. You, you can't do that. It's just like getting an in-person testing. I mean, you have to, uh, you know, you have to stay in front of the computer while taking an OP exam. The only exception would be if there's a built-in schedule break to the GED test. So for instance, reasoning through language arts, that's a long, long subject area. There is a 10 minute break built in and students certainly during the OP test when that 10 minute break occurs, uh, can take a break at that point and they could, uh, they could step away at that, uh, for that 10 minute break. So as I said, I don't have a lot of Massachusetts specific info, but the key stuff here is anyone in the state of Massachusetts who is 18 plus right now is eligible to take an OP GED test, provided they score a 145 or higher on the GED ready within the past 60 days in any subject area they wish to take. So currently it's, uh, it's available to everyone in the state of Massachusetts who's 18 plus. Um, the only other caveat I would add there is if, if, if they have a, a, an accommodation, in other words, if they have an extra time accommodation right now that is approved for testing, then they would not be able to test via OP. I, mean, I think that's a very, very small amount of people. So. The cost of the OP test, I'm sure that's maybe a question that's, that's come in. Uh, it is the same as uh, in-person testing. So it's $31.25 per subject area. The, there's four subject areas. So the, the cost for the full test is $125. And again, it's pay as you go. It's, it's, you, know, you pay for one subject area at a time. So pay $31.25 per subject area. All right, I just have a couple more slides and then I'll pause and I'm sure there's, there's questions. So what can you do to help your students who need to test as soon as possible? So certainly for first and foremost, you can make your students aware that this OP testing option exists now for the GED test. Uh, you can certainly help students ensure, uh, help them you know, with, if you're working with students to get that GED ready score of 145 or higher. As I've said, I know you're probably, uh, that's, that one's probably sunk in that uh, they have to get the GED ready score of 145 or, or higher. I know I've said it multiple, multiple times because I wanted to press that point home. Uh, making students aware of some of the OP test resources, that calculator resource I just mentioned, and there are some other ones I, I, will, I will mention here after I get through this next slide. We highly recommend students run a system check prior to scheduling an OP test appointment. So we don't have a way to enforce them, to make them do this, but here's how it works. Uh, if I schedule an OP testing appointment, when I show up for my testing appointment and I log in, I'm going to have to run this system check. It's, it's pretty easy to do. I've done it multiple times to see what it's like, and it's, it's pretty easy. The system check is going to tell me, is my, is my computer, uh, will it work to take an OP exam? We highly recommend they do this prior to, the, uh, to, the, to their appointment time. In other words, before even scheduling an appointment, we highly recommend there's a link here in their accounts. I I'll show you where they can run this system check at any point. Uh, highly recommend them doing that because if they, if they don't do that and then they make the appointment and get to the appointment time and they find out their system, you know, their system is, not, is not going to work, whatever they're using, um, you know, they, they could forfeit their, their fee potentially at, at that point. So I just want to stress that, that I really highly recommend if they, if they can do the system check in advance. It'll, it'll really be reassuring to say, yep, your computer's good to go. And then on test, day, on test time, it should be, you know, just a little more relaxing check-in process. GED test vouchers, if any of you have purchased GED test vouchers to give to your students, those will work just fine for OP tests. It's, it's basically the same payment system. So you would just enter those vouchers on the payment screen uh, as normal, and it will discount the, the OP test just as it would if they were coming into the test in person. And I'm gonna pause after this slide uh, to see what questions came in. 
But I just want to say, so after the initial pilot phase, so we expect this, what we're calling the pilot to run until uh, basically July 31st is what we're targeting. After the pilot phase in either late July or August, we will have a Spanish version of the test available. We're working on it fast and furiously. We will have certain testing accommodations available such as extra time. I'm sure there's others as, as well uh, that uh, can be handled via online proctored test. I expect that we will have a process sometime in August for 16 and 17 year olds to be able to test via OP. Really the issue there, just to, just to uh, shed some light on it, is when you're taking an OP test, you are being recorded. 16 and 17 year olds cannot consent to the recording piece, meaning there has to be a parent or guardian involved. So it's a bit more of a process that we have to put into place in order to allow 16 and 17 year olds. I, I expect that we will in August, more details to come on that. And then the last bullet is really, it's going to be up to each state after the pilot to determine how they want to utilize an online proctor GED test. So DESE, will will work with DESE and determine, you know, do we, I assume we will still want to have this available after the pilot in Massachusetts. I, I don't think, you know, we're going to be back to normal in-person testing volume anytime soon, quite, on, quite honestly. I'm sure even when test centers reopen, they're going to be reopening with fewer seats, maybe fewer hours, et cetera, et cetera. So I think we're going to have, want to have this OP option available, uh, certainly for, you know, the foreseeable future. Um, in conjunction with the reopening of test centers. So we'll be working closely with DESE on that. We're not, we're not forcing OP testing on anyone, so to speak. I mean, states are telling us how they want to utilize OP testing. DESE's been very supportive of this option for the obvious reasons that there's been almost no high school equivalency testing the past few months. With that, why don't, uh, Rachel, why don't I pause here? Great. Yeah, we've had a few quick, good questions come in from people. Keep uh, feel free to keep putting your questions here in the chat box, people. Um, a couple questions about the GED ready test. Um, is that going to be just for the pilot phase or is that also for the normal phase? Um, also want to know what the cost of the GED ready test is um, and how will students show their score that they're eligible for the online test? Sure, so the GED Ready, uh, we've made it a requirement for on, an online proc, to take an online proctor test. There, there is no GED Ready requirement if you're testing in person. I'm guessing most of you know that, but just to clarify. But for the online proctor GED test, we have made the GED test a requirement. I, I expect that it will remain a requirement after this pilot phase. I guess anything's subject to change, but right now I expect that it will remain a requirement for OP after this initial pilot phase ends in, in late July. The, Rachel, and just if I miss anything here on this <laughs> question, let me know, but I think I got them all. Yep. Um, so right now the cost of the GED Ready is uh, to students is $3 per subject area. So that's, and again, that's the 50% off the, the retail price right now through at least the end of June. I'm hoping we extend it, but I can only promise through the end of June. Some, some programs in the past, and certainly you can, have purchased GED Ready vouchers, meaning that you've purchased GED Ready vouchers and then you distribute them to your test takers as you see fit. If you want to do that, if you've already done it, or if you want to purchase GED Ready vouchers, I highly recommend you purchase from one of the publishers. You will get the best pricing possible. Essentially, you'll be paying a wholesale price as opposed to a retail price. The normal retail price for a test taker uh, is $6 per subject area for the GED Ready. As I said, it's currently discounted to $3 per subject area uh, through the end of June. If you have any, if people have questions about how to purchase GED Ready vouchers, in other words, if you're a program who wants to purchase them in bulk, uh, just get in touch with me and I, I can, I'll, I'll, I'll give you more details. But really, you'd want to purchase through one of our publishing partners who sells GED Ready vouchers in, in bulk if you're an adult education program who wants to purchase them. Okay. The last question was about when somebody takes the GED Ready, gets the 145 or higher, uh, how do they actually, what happens then in terms of taking an OP exam? So uh, I think this is good news here. Once somebody takes a GED Ready and scores a 145 or higher, they will automatically be approved to take an OP exam. So when they log back into their GED.com account, 
they will then have the option to schedule an OP exam at that point because they have met the require requirement of scoring 145 or higher on the GED rating. Great. Um, couple more questions here. Um, uh, you mentioned that, I think, I think you said that they can only take the OP, the OP once. Someone asked, um, if they don't pass on OP, can they not retest online? Will they have to go to a physical test center to retest? Is that right? That's correct. That, that is our policy right now. They will need to go to a physical test center if they don't pass uh, the OP test. Correct. Okay. Um, also a question here about fees. Um, if they've paid for the full battery of tests previously, will that amount get credited to the OP test? So I guess this would be a situation where somebody paid for the test uh, in person. I think so, yeah. I've got to answer this. I mean, if, if I had paid for the test in person in the past, but my appointment was canceled due to the test center closure, we, we would have refunded your money. So you would, have, you would have got your testing fee back. And now if you want to take via OP, you're obviously just going to schedule and pay via, via OP because you would have been refunded. Okay. Um, so I hope, I hope that answers it. Okay. If, if um, anyone, yeah, go ahead. All right. Yeah, a couple questions about sort of re um, technology and connectivity. Um, wanting to know if Chromebooks will work with OP. Uh, and what happens if the student has a computer issue during the test or, you know, do they have to have a hardwire connection? Can they use a Wi-Fi connection? A couple questions like that. Yeah, uh, Wi-Fi is fine. Uh, in terms of my understanding is Chromebooks will not work for OP. I guess if somebody has a Chromebook that they're, they're welcome to do that system check. But I've been told that Chromebooks are not likely to work with, with OP. Um, Okay. As I said, I, I would do the system check, but I, I don't think Chromebooks are going to, to work, but probably worth doing the system check. It'll tell them if, if, if it's not suitable. It doesn't matter if it's a PC or a Mac, by the way. I know I've gotten that question in, in the past from other folks. It, it's platform agnostic in terms of, you know, whether it's, whether you're using Windows or, or, or Mac. Gotcha. Other question about uh, what happens if there's a connectivity issue during the test. So, you know, if there's a brief connectivity issue with somebody's Wi-Fi, you know, I guess this happens to us all the time. It might be, you know, a few seconds or something like that. Um, the test should just quickly resume. You know, if there's a brief glitch and it suddenly goes out for a, a few seconds, it should just quickly resume once the Wi-Fi reconnects. Um, if, there was a lar if there was a larger technology issue during the exam, uh, you know, I guess that potentially could, could uh, stop somebody from continuing. So we're, we're kind of looking at those on a one-by-one -one cases as to what needs to be done here. I mean, for the most part, from what we've seen so far, with, uh, you know, about almost 300 people, it's, it's been pretty smooth for the vast majority of people. Um, we had a couple people. We had somebody who literally had a thunderstorm that knocked their power out. Uh, so, you know, we, we, we credited him or he's taking it again with no cost. It's, it's an individual situation. But for the most part, if there's a small... Uh, glitch with the internet or a small time where the internet cuts out. Once it once it reconnects, it should just pick up exactly where the test uh, left off. It shouldn't be an issue. Okay. A um, couple questions uh, clarifying about sort of uh, retesting online. So if someone has failed uh, a portion or the regular GED test before, like let's say before March, <laughs> um, can they retest with the OP? Yes. Yes, they can. Okay. Yes, it's just it's just if you if you take if I take math via OP and I don't pass it, I won't be able to retest in math I'll, it, via OP. I'll have to go to a, uh, a an in person testing center. But if I if I you know if I failed math last last October at an in person testing center, uh, you are more than welcome to take the math test via OP. Okay, great. You should get one shot via OP in any in each subject area. Um, we have a question about vouchers that were provided by the state um, and if those vouchers are avail are able to be used for the OP. Yeah, I don't know specifically what those vouchers are, but if they're a, if they're a test voucher um, or a ready voucher, they, they, they will work. Okay, great. And I think the last question I see here at the moment, um, will the diploma issued by DESE indicate that it was an OP version or not? Is it just sort of a 
um, equivalent. Yeah, good, good question. No, there's there's not going to be any distinction that would say it's an OP test. Uh, you know, the, the diploma and credential, the transcript will be will be the same whether you took it in an in-person testing center or via OP. Great. All right, I think those are the questions I've seen. If anyone else has an additional question or if I missed your question, just put that back in the chat box again and we'll get to questions. Um, there was a question about uh, whether or not there are uh, free test preparation resources available, and I have a feeling you might be coming to that. <laughs> sure, so I'm actually going to, well, one moment, I'm, I'm gonna leave the slide presentation in a minute, but let me, let me resume the slide uh, presentation. Oh, and I do see that question there. Do, do vouchers provided by the state DTA, Department of, Transi Department of Transitional Assistance, uh, work? Uh, yeah, I've been working closely with DTA about purchasing GED ready vouchers, or excuse me, GED test vouchers. So I, I wasn't aware they've actually purchased them at this point. But if, if, if DTA provides a, a GED test voucher, Yes, it, it, will, it will work. I'm just I'm specifying GED test as opposed to if they, a high set voucher is not going to work in our, our system. Probably goes without saying, but just to clarify. Okay, so resources here. Uh, this page, some of you may have seen, sorry, this is a, a, like a little bit small, but uh, we have an educator and resources page, uh, call it our COVID-19 educator support page. We did a webinar a couple of months back all about this, so I just wanted to put the link in there. There may be some valuable resources uh, that you could utilize in this time of you know, distance learning, which I'm sure all of you are doing currently. This is our online Proctor GED test pilot page on the, you know, this is for the, on the test, uh, on the educator administrator side of our website. So uh, there's, uh, there's a number of reasons. We've done two webinars uh, that we've recorded and posted here. We have some other resources. I can actually go out to the page and, and show you here. Um, there's a link to the system check here. There's a little handy dandy document that shows the kind of the policy differences between in-person testing and OP and OP. And that's right here, actually. Uh, I think I've covered all of these, I believe, but this it's a, kind of a handy document there that, that just shows policy differences. Our professional development page, this, this is nothing specific to OP, it's just we have uh, lots of professional development resources for educators. We do these Tuesdays for teachers webinars about six times a year. They're on a different topic of the GD test. Some of you may have attended or listened to them in the past. Here's the link to the uh, calculator tutorial I told you, you know, that the built-in virtual calculator. Uh, there's a link to that. that the, this link is also available in the student's account. But obviously, uh, you know, for educators, we wanted to put it uh, on the educator uh, part of our webpage as well, of course. Here's the scratch pad I mentioned. So you can see it there in the middle of the screen. It's circled in red there is the scratch pad. So it's not, it's not going to appear on the screen unless they click that scratch pad button, and then it will appear, as you can see there in the middle of the screen. You can move it around. Uh, you can make it smaller or larger. I played around with it during my the test I took via OP. It was, it was pretty easy to to utilize. It was, it was easy to make it smaller or larger. Um, you know, I guess when I was reading something, sometimes okay, I had to move it move it out of the way a little bit uh, when I went to use it. I think most people use these scratch pads primarily, or you know, want to do notes, so to speak, in in math is where you primarily see this. So that is the scratch pad feature we have for now. As I said, we are looking at this and we don't, we don't, we don't love this. We don't love it quite honestly, but I don't have, we don't have a better way right now, but we are looking to see if we can, um, what we can do here in the, in the future. Okay, as I said, I, I thought it'd be worth it here. Um, just to show you briefly. So this is, you know, this is actually, this is my gdtesting.com account. Um, so you can see here, it'll say, this is what all test takers would see who got that G, as green, excuse me, on the GED Ready. It's going to say, congrats, you've scored green on your GED Ready practice test. And in here it says, we have made online testing available for you. And then if I scroll down, so it's going to, each time I get a GED Ready green, it's going to, that message is going to pop up. 
And if I scroll down here, it does say here, online testing is now available. So if I click schedule test here, now you'll see here, I'm approved for both. So I could take the online GD proctored exam or I could test via in-person. For the online proctor test, there the student sees the system test. Uh, I've done this, it's really, it's really pretty easy to do. So if they click on that, they can run that system test, which I, I've tried to stress the importance of, because I really do think it's important to do it before you actually schedule your appointment to make sure your, your, your laptop or your desktop, whatever you're using, is compatible. They can obviously then schedule their online test right here. And then there's this learn more about online testing. I actually have this in a PDF and I can, Rachel, I can send this over to you with my PowerPoint. I think this might be useful to send out to folks. So if I click on this, um, sorry, I thought I'd already opened it, but if I click on that, it opens and it gives uh, lots of key information in terms of the online proctored GED test. So I'll just scroll down. Briefly, it's going to tell you what you need to test online. It's going to tell you how it works. Again, there's the system check here where we tried to put it as many places as possible. Uh, before test day, again, we've stressed run the system test. Prepare your workplace. You, know, you need to clear off your desk. Um, you know, if you have an extra monitor or something like that, it's going to have to be turned off or you might need to. I removed mine actually just to be sure. Uh, you know, you can't have your phone nearby. I mean, just you need a clean, a clean desk, basically. Talks about rescheduling and canceling on test day. It gives some information here about test day. During the test, here's that calculated tutorial I mentioned. Talks about the online scratch pad, exam rules. And then here it does talk about the system requirements at the bottom. Again, again the, link, the link to the system test. So operating systems, you know, internet browsers, webcam, et cetera, et cetera. So I think this is a valuable resource. And as I said, I, I can make this available to, to you all uh, along with the PowerPoint. And then of course they can actually just schedule their test. It would just click schedule online test. Let's say I want to take math. I'm going to find an appointment. They have, we have the you know, annoying little things you have to agree to. I'm going to click next. Yeah, I'm going to take math. And then I would select my testing date. So you'll see, let, let's say I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm ready, I'll test next week. So next week, if I click on that, I mean, there are pretty much appointments available at any time during the day, as you can see there. You know, if I wanted to test today, certainly there's going to be fewer appointments available. There's a few, but not many, not many. I think Monday's a busy test day. Looks like Saturday has some testing dates here. Again, these weekends fill up quick. Right now there's some morning appointments available. So as I said, it is it is 24 seven, which is quite convenient for, for folks. Um, I won't go any further on the scheduling, but they would simply select their, their, their scheduling time and then they would go into the payment screen. And then this is the home screen for GED test takers. And loading so they could take a GD ready if they if you click study click practice you can actually that's how you would take the GD ready there are lots of resources under more test tips is valuable and I don't think enough people look at this but um, you know things like the computer-based testing tutorial is here which I highly recommend the and the calculator tutorial is here as well uh, Students also have access to um, study materials here. There's some free study materials. There's study material by my subjects. I click language arts. Uh, this is their free study material for language arts. There's a really good short videos on how to write a great extended response. 
um, and then down here with Flash, uh, that's a paid product, and you know, there's some other uh, paid products. We also talk about prep courses down there. That's, we actually tell them about press prep courses when they're first signing up, but just another reminder down there. Scott, here's a related question to the resources yeah. you just showed. Um, will the GED Ready mirror the OP um, in terms of having like the scratch pad and the calculator for students to kind of get familiar with? And related question was um, if the amount of time for the test has increased to account for students getting used to these new technologies. Yeah, so the time for the OP test, for the GED test, the times are the same. We, we have not increased the, the time at this point for each, each subject area, so it's the same amount of time. Um, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that as, where, you know, as we're constantly monitoring tests, test ticker data. So uh, we'll, we'll look at that. I think thus far, you know, we haven't seen time being an issue for, for folks, but we certainly will closely monitor that. For the GD Ready, uh, the scratch pad is not, I, I'm, I'll double check on this, but I'm fairly certain the scratch pad is not available for the GD Ready. So I wish it was, uh, but quite honestly right now, I don't, I don't really have a way for them to practice with the scratch pad before. And I'm going to double check on that, but I'm not forgetting something, a way they can practice with that scratch pad. Uh, but I, quite honestly right now, I don't think there, there is, but I will double check on that. Great, thanks. Uh, and let me just, let me just go to GED. So on the educator side, you know, when you go to GED.com, just the educator administrator tab, here's those resources related to COVID-19. There's our webinar and then there's lots of resources down here uh, in terms of virtual classrooms for distance ed. Here is that page I mentioned and I linked to it in the document for the online Proctor GD test pilot. So as I said, we've recorded a webinar here, you know, for the national audience um, as part one. There's the slide deck. That full system check link is there. Um, that policy document, uh, I showed you just the differences between the in-person testing and OP. Um, and then we did a part two to the webinar as, as well. Again, that was a webinar we did for the national audience recently. So those are all there. I'm just going to go back to the slide deck here. And I'm actually just going to go, I hope you all have my email address and contact information, but I'm just going to go to the end here. So, all right. And I have, bring up my slide there. Feel free to email me. Sorry, I didn't put my phone number in there, but I'm, I'm always on email. Of course, I'm working from home now. <laughs> Nowhere else to go, so no problem getting me on email. My, my phone number, I'll, I'll just say it if you, 781-296-9357. Uh, Feel free, email, call me anytime you, you like uh, with questions about OP or, or just GD testing in, in general. So I covered everything I wanted to. A lot of been a lot of good questions. Are there additional questions I can I can clarify answer before we before we sign off today? Any more questions? It's been a really great discussion. I think a lot of good details. Um, definitely want to share that PDF if you're able to, Scott. That would be great. Sure, I'll, 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 I'll send the PowerPoint and I'll send that PDF with the, you know, that gives the overview of, of the OP exam. Okay. Quite, quite useful. Great. Uh, question if someone needs a social security number to take the test? Uh, they do not. No, Mass, no, it's not a requirement for us and Massachusetts does not require, does not require a social security number. I, I believe it's when they're signing up, it's, it's an optional field. So they okay. don't. And uh, can you just clarify um, sort of what the online proctor is doing while the person is taking the test? <laughs> yeah, so the, the student, of course, when they're taking an online proctor test is, is on webcam the entire time. So the proctor, kind of like a Zoom call, has a number of test takers in front of them. And, you know, they're, they're, they're monitoring, taking a look at everyone to see, you know, people are still sitting down taking the test. You know, they don't hear anything coming from anyone else in the room or see anyone else in the room. 
or see anything else that would be a testing, testing violation. As I said, there's also a little built-in artificial intelligence as well to, to help us as, as well with this. Uh, test takers are being recorded when they're testing just in case there is any type of security issue, you know, we'd be able to go back to the, the recording. Uh, so yeah, so that's what's happening. I guess the audio, of course, they need as well. Um, yeah. Proctor can, can hear anything that would be, if there was any conversation in the room, Proctor would be able to hear that. Okay. And do you know when Massachusetts might be planning to open online or uh, in-person test centers back up? Yeah, I, I mean, I talk with Mike Pharma all the time. Uh, from what I've heard, and honestly, there may be folks on this call who know more than me, that in terms of community colleges, most are... I think all community colleges right now are closed at least through June, potentially longer than that in terms of testing. Um, and then, you know, not, not every site is at a community college, but a fair amount are. Then non-community college sites, uh, again, I've heard, I didn't think anything was really opening in June. I'm, I'm unclear beyond June what will be happening. As I said, there, you know there's some folks here from test centers, programs who deliver testing who, who may have additional information on that. Yep, and I see a couple of people putting some notes here in the in the chat box about PV test centers are open. The only one I'm aware of in Massachusetts currently, as I said, is a center in Boston who who has remained open through the entire pan, pandemic, and people have gone in there and tested. Not not a lot, but people who need to test immediately have. Great. I'm curious, just before we sign off, if anyone in talking to your students gets any sense about is there is there concern from test takers about coming in to take an to do in-person testing again. I'm just curious if there's any anecdotal feedback on, on that, if they've heard from their test takers about it, or if they think most people would be comfortable when test centers reopen, or if you think there's gonna be a, a weariness to it. Yeah, from what I saw earlier, it was a little bit mixed. Some people worried about, uh, you know, especially the, the virus hitting black and brown communities a little bit harder than others. Uh, some said their students have not expressed that. Uh, some said that new students do seem to wor be worried about it. So it seems like there's there's quite a mix, uh, but yeah. definitely concern uh, generally yeah. among the community. Uh, what, basically what I expect, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Pharma, I see sites open as the college or district allows, and they're working on the guidelines. Um, sounds like people do want to continue with their testing, but um, we're all trying to figure out how to navigate this. So uh, <laughs> figuring that out together, I think. Uh, yeah, sorry about your teens. I said we're working on it. It's, I mean, I hope it won't be that far off, but for right now it is, it is 18 plus. Um, yeah. If they don't mind going to Boston, they, they, they can test there. I know that. I know everyone, but just, just throwing it out there. Yeah, good point here from Leslie too. I think students with limited tech skills might be intimidated by an online test. So that'll be very interesting, I think, to track uh, as you go along through the pilot. Um, and I think, you know, we can certainly share, but any resources, uh, Scott, that you can highlight for helping test takers get familiar with the online environment or anything that uh, maybe resources that teachers could use to help walk their students through how to prepare for an online test. Sounds like that would be some helpful information. Okay. Uh, where in Boston is the, the one testing center that has been remained open? So it's called Tech Computers. It's actually in, I guess I'd call it South Boston. Um, I, I will say, convenient-wise, it is right off a, an MBA T-stop. Um, I think it's is it Andrew or Broadway. I always forget. I think it's I think it's Andrew. Uh, so it is right off the T-stop, and they they are open five to six days days a week. So just throwing it out there right now. I mean, sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures. Mike Banks, it's it's right off the Andrew MBA T-stop. There you go. And you mentioned earlier about the Spanish version was coming soon, right? It is. I mean, we're working on it, and as I said, I, I, late July or August, we will have the Spanish version. Uh, okay. We, we just didn't want to hold up OP test. You know, as I said, we, we wanted to get it out there without knowing we wouldn't have everything available when we started. But I mean, I, I think it's a really good option for for, for folks right now. Uh, we're excited about it um, as an option for folks, and I, I think just some of the conveniences of it do make it appealing for for a fair amount of people. Absolutely. And I'm sure people will want to follow up with you if they have more questions about um, the logistics or how they can help their students get ready or what's available when. So <laughs> we'll wow. definitely make sure you all have Scott's email and phone number to, to follow up with him. 
Yeah, if there's questions that didn't get answered, you just need want to have further conversations, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Great. All right, well, I'm just going to share a little bit of close out information. You have some ways to stay connected with us at MK. We're going to continue to share these resources through all of our channels, Twitter, Facebook, our newsletter, um, and our action alerts. We will post the recording of this webinar later in the week um, via our Facebook page. So you'll be able to find that, share it with your colleagues. You have my contact information here if you need to get in touch with me. And we will share the slides as well as Scott's contact information uh, later so that you'll have everything that was shared today. Links, all the links on the slides, you'll have all of that in hand. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, please complete the survey that will also come to you with the slides. That will help us know uh, what you got out of today's webinar. And if you need a participation certificate for the webinar today, you will indicate that by entering your email in the survey where it asks for that information. And then I will follow up with you um, with the certificate. Um, please help support our work. If you've enjoyed this webinar and others in the series, um, please consider making a small donation to help us continue with our our efforts this um, this this year. Um, want to especially thank Scott and GED Testing Services for sponsoring this webinar. Um, that was incredibly helpful, and we are so glad to be able to have shared this information with you. Um, as Scott mentioned, we were all hoping to be together at our network conference this year, which we unfortunately had to cancel. Um, but we do have our date set for next year, March 26th, and we hope to be in, together in person. And if we can't be, then we will find a way to connect um, online. But do save the date, March 26th, 2021, for our network conference um, so that we can continue to bring together um, all of the teachers, tutors, counselors, administrators, and advocates in this field and, and continue to work together to, um, to strengthen our practice of adult education here in Massachusetts. So thank you, thank you Scott so much and GED Testing Services for this webinar. I think this was incredibly useful information and I know this will be an ongoing process and we'll continue to see how things go over the summer and um, glad to, to be connected with everyone here and stay safe, um, be well, stay in touch with us and we will connect with you all again soon. Thanks very much.